Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we are going to do a little painting. We've been in this house for 12 years and really haven't done a lot in the way of decorating it or making our own. And so I thought this wall back here, because it's kind of a trapezoid shape, would be a good one to paint as kind of a feature wall. Now, my wife is afraid of color for some reason, as you can tell by the beige and brown and white. Nothing very exciting there. But somehow she allowed for these wild, air quotes, wild carpets, rugs, I guess. So we have one in each room. So what I thought is I would try and pick up one of the blue colors, the gray blue anyways, in this carpet and paint this wall the same color. Now, this isn't really a how-to video on how to paint a wall. That's probably pretty simple to do in a lot of videos out there. So I'm just gonna show you what I've done and uh, you can comment if you like it. So I'm also gonna do that triangle there as well because in the living room area, we have the same rug as we do in the dining area. So let's get these walls taped off and prepped, and let's put some color on. So this paint I chose was the Sicko Classic. Uh, main reason I chose it was number one, the color card that we picked was from this brand of paint, and number two, it was on sale, so everybody likes a good deal. So the color I'm gonna paint this wall is kind of a gray blue. I mean, not totally exciting. We're not painting the wall like a, a, a red or a burnt orange or something like that, but it'll give it a little, little bit more of a unique look than uh, the uh, good old-fashioned beige. Okay, I taped all the edges off and this edge in here is really not that straight when they did the drywall. I'm hoping that when I paint this wall that that line will look pretty straight. If not and people uh, criticize it, well then, you know, get the hell out of my house. Hey, here's a nice fireplace I did two weeks ago. I put all nice uh, shale on it. Now, I'm almost embarrassed to say that took me some hours over three different weekends, but uh, it turned out great, none the same. Regardless, that's not the job we're working on now. I think next is, uh, I'm just going to give the walls a quick wipe down, especially because they're close to the kitchen. And obviously take off that uh, face plate. I'm curious what's going to happen on this rounded corner if I just run my roller straight up. It'll create a straight line on the edge there. I guess we'll have to see. I do have paint that matches this, so if I do bugger something up, at least I, I have an out there. Okay, let's wash the walls and get that faceplate off. Okay, we got the walls washed and the faceplate off. Now we'll just let that dry for a bit and uh, lay down the drop cloth because I'm pretty sloppy when I'm painting. I plan on leaving this, this uh, beige color. So I'm curious too with my roller what it's gonna do to that straight line there. So we shall see. Um, let's just roll with it. And normally I like bare paint, but this was on sale, so let's give that a try. And with a damp cloth, I usually like to just wipe off my rollers just to get some of the dust off them. Prevents that linty stuff getting mixed in your paint. 
I like to use these tray liners too. It makes cleanup a lot more easy. Ooh, look at that blue. I guess it's not blue, it's called Mountain River. <clears throat> look, I haven't even started and I got paint on my hands. I'm using a short roller as well as the long one just because I've got some weird uh, angles in here. Okay, let's start cutting it in, see what mess we can make. Okay, that's the first coat on this wall. Now, I think it's gonna dry a little bit darker. And, of course, the camera probably won't pick it up very well. So I'm not sure what I should do with this edge. I'm thinking I should tape it there. And then paint the corner, because it is kind of a, you know, a bit of a frayed edge there. Same with, uh, same with around the stairs here. I think I might have to do that, tape it off and because up there it's kind of a funny edge now too. Or should I paint all the way around? But then I'll have the same funny edge over here if I don't, if I don't tape it somewhere. I don't know. What would you guys do? Okay, well, that's that wall. Coat number one, I usually like to do two light coats versus a heavy one, even though this paint does have primer in it. Let's get to this little wall now too. can see why I tape with the overpainting that I do. I think, you know, it would almost be better not to tape and you would go at it a little bit more careful. Uh, over here, I just, I taping this off and I'm just gonna paint down this edge and try and get a straight edge out of it. And, uh, you know, maybe make it look a little less ragged there. But I'm going to let it dry for oh, an hour or two, and then I'm going to do a second coat on it. So I'm trying to pick up the blue in this carpet, the blue-gray, which is kind of this color here. I think this will be pretty close once it's dry. It's a little bit, it's bold, but not in... Uh, you know, a bright color perspective. It's bold in the sense that, you know, everything around here is beige and brown and tan and and uh, I'm throwing this blue wall in here, but trying to pick up the, you know, the uniqueness of that wall being like a, what do you call it? Parallelogram? Trapezoid? I don't know. Okay, this is either going to be the scariest part or the most satisfying. See how much bleed through we got.
Hmm, not that great. Always trying to get a perfect job out of it, but the world ain't perfect either. I guess that's the downside to the rounded corners. Some of it's not so bad, some of it not so good. Not really worth crying over though. I have to touch up in there, some of the old paint can still be seen. That's okay. Over there. That's just a bad taping job. Well, not too bad at the baseboard level. I'm doing this while the paint is fair, kind of wet, just so that it doesn't stick forever. to bleed through there. I love how it's pulling away the beige tape. That's the original cheap ass paint job they did here. Here, I got blue paint on the ceiling, way to go Tom, but I was able to patch the ceiling with some basically ceiling paint in a can, but I'm going to have to touch up uh, how the overspray I got on the wall. Well, it's the next day and everything's completely dry. I'm kind of talking quiet here because the boss is downstairs teaching a yoga class, so it all turned out pretty good I think. I fixed up my mess up there and you can't see with this flower in the way but I fixed up my edges on here a bit by touching it up with the beige paint. I think it turned out pretty good and back in here everything's back together again this here is probably one of my favorite projects I did a couple weeks ago was refacing our fireplace with some shale. It looked so drab and boring before. 
So yeah, it doesn't take much in the way of dollars to freshen up your environment and make it more to your liking. And uh, that's pretty much what I did today or this weekend. Another thing I'm thinking about with this blue paint is if I painted inside this door frame here and up along there just on the underside and down here with the blue I wonder what that would be like what do you think do you think that would add some depth to that window I don't know baby steps right you know my wife like I said is has an aversion to color so that's why I try and just do you know like a feature wall like this section here that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. We just did a little bit of redecorating. And again, basically trying to pick up the blue in that carpet that we have, a rug, I guess, and put it on that wall, kind of give the, give the place a little refresh look. So that's it. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.